Hello, and welcome to another classic installment of Midnight Snacks with Clay. I'm, of course, your host, Clay, and uh, we're going to be eating snacks and food and other such things in this world of people that are stealing toilet paper and building random things out of it. Um, hope everyone is having a great week. Uh, I, we've had a kind of a crazy week here um, with the church and stuff like that. I've been trying to handle with the internet issues we've been having and the audio issues for Sunday morning. Uh, hopefully that'll be better this week. Uh, and we've just uh, been, I've been calling all kinds of people and trying to get stuff worked out. We're still trying to learn how this whole internet stuff works. Um, so I don't know why that is I'm even on my eye. It does even that looks better. Um Thanks Ellie. I thought I actually when I put on this Pikachu hat, I thought that you might I thought of you because you are my Pokemon nerd, you and Jewel. Um so I thought you might enjoy it. Um I have some mini a hat that I like to wear. I'm okay with the beanies. Um Okay. That's really, that looks good. Um, I, uh, I'm i okay with my beanies. I'm not a very big hat person, um, like ball cap. It makes my hair itch, if that makes sense. Um, I think like my hair gets trapped and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, welcome, welcome everyone. Um, so now that we are kind of, uh, building an audience. Um, I'll go ahead and start with my midnight snack story. I really need to find another program to be able to do this so I can like have a, a slide come in and be like, it's the midnight snack show with Clay and like fun stuff like that. So here's my story. There is a, uh, a Christian con concert called Ichthus. Um, some of you all might have heard of, maybe not you youngins. Um, because they, because of uh, lack of money and stuff, they it kind of it got bought out by Creation Fest and so on and so forth. Well, anyway, Ichthus takes place um, in Wilmore, which is where I'm from. Um, it was made to counteract Woodstock, um, which I always thought was a really cool thing. Um, because one thing that Christians that we do that I think is awesome is we have a habit of um, taking things and make them making them Jesus things, and I think that's really cool we're like hey I, I like this pagan festival you you have around christmas you know what uh, we're going to celebrate jesus birthday um and you know we're just different things we've done you know even starting back with paul who goes i was walking around and i saw you had a uh, statue to an unknown god let me tell you about that god um he was the original stealer of things and making them jesus um i think it's really cool so anyway ichthus Basically, they're like, man, Woodstock's super popular. People love going out to this field and camping and just having concerts. We should do something that is Jesus-related. And so they started Ichthus. But Ichthus ended up taking place in Ichthus Park, which was literally, um, I grew up on five acres, and then across the street was another five acres, and behind their, their yard was Ichthus Park. Um, and so I was able to go over there and actually uh, participate in Ichthus. I think I start it when I was um, about 13 or 14, this first year I went. And what they would let you do is you, it was like 150, 250, it was, it was a lot of money. I never paid and I'm about to tell you why. I paid one year. Um, but what you could do is you could work for them. And of course it wasn't, you worked a nine hour shift with a one hour, 30 minutes or one hour lunch break. Um, and it wasn't glamorous jobs. Most week or most years, I worked uh, grounds. So the first year, we went back over when the festival was over, and we just swept the grounds of trash, um, just shoved trash in bags. That's all we did for eight hours. It was not the most fun things. You kids have never worked for a day in your life. Um, but it, it was a fun three-day festival. Um, it kind of stunk knowing that was coming up, but it was still good. Um, so one year, I, I'm doing grounds, um, and I know, okay, probably going to have to pick up trash and so on and so forth. Well, we happen to be doing grounds, 
in the middle of uh, the festival. Um, I actually had worked it out. I knew what concerts were going to be. And I was like, oh, there's like one band I want to see, but all the other bands are on the other nights. So I'll just work this night. So my friend and I decided to go over and we decided to be extra cool. And my dad had fashioned me a trash stabber. Um, he had taken a stick and my dad's super crafty. Um, he's always has stuff in the garage. I'm like, dad, I wish I could do this. And he's like, one second. And you know, like you're and then like he comes out and he's like, here, I made that for you. Um, but anyway, and so I was like, I wish there was some way to, uh, to pick up trash. And he's like, one second. And he got like a straight, two straight sticks that he happened to have in the garage for no reason. Nailed it down, cut off the end to make a pokey part. And then we, uh, me and my friend took our pokey sticks and we went over there. And so they're, okay, okay, welcome to the, the grounds. Y'all are going to be picking up trash today. You all should have known that, so on and so forth. And like, before we start... Um, we actually need two volunteers to do porter potties. And everyone's like, porter potties. And probably you all at home are like, porter potties. Um, but my friend and I looked at each other, and there's no guarantee. This is one of those things where they just assign things. There's no guarantee we were going to get to have the same job, um, except this. Uh, volunteer two people, just the two of us. And so we were like, sure, why not us? Um, guys, listen, one of the best years of grounds work I've ever done, I ever did. I'm sorry, grounds work the best year. One of the best years I worked for Ichthus. So it turns out our porter potty duty wasn't as much as like emptying them out or washing them or anything like that. Our job was to ride around on a golf cart and refill the porter potty's toilet paper. So the only thing we really had to deal with was the smell. Now, the weird thing is, is the barn where they kept all the toilet paper had been broken into and someone had stolen toilet paper. Um, and we don't know how in eight hours with 15,000 people, probably we replaced maybe five things of toilet paper the whole eight hours, which is just bananas. Um, we feel like someone must have been breaking in and like filling them up or something weird thing. So anyway, it was me and my friend Spencer. Um, and he, uh, and like, a an old older go cart cause we were, or the golf cart cause we were 15, 16, probably. Um, we might not even been that old. We, anyway, adult supervision. Um, but it was a blast. We just like we just drove around and just kind of were goofy. Um, my friend, however, did uh, prank me by he turned um, he put his finger in where it said occupied and pushed it over so it said uh, open or whatever it is. And I knocked and the person in there didn't I guess figured it was locked and thought they didn't need to say anything. And so I just flung the door open. And uh, they were super embarrassed. I was embarrassed. My friend was over in the corner laughing to himself. Um, I hit him. I was like, I can't believe that happened. He's like, I'm the one that did it. And I was like, I hate you. Um, so anyway, and so then we, we do this for the first four hours. And then they call us back and they're like, okay, apparently you all don't need to do toilet paper because everyone has toilet paper. Um, what we really need is we really need help with picking up garbage. Um, and we were like, okay. Um, and God bless our supervisor who was like, you guys want to just drive around and help people get their bags to the garbage place? And we we're like, yeah. So what we ended up doing is we would drive around we'd see someone with a big old full bag of garbage, which was awesome. And be like, hey, good job. Can we take that over to the dump for you? And they're like, yeah, sure. Um, and that became our job. So even when we were supposed to be picking up trash, we ended up finding a cushy way of doing it with a golf cart. It was great. So then the story gets interesting slash a little gross. It's not actually gross, just it seemed gross. Um, we had another friend who just showed up and was like, hey, can I help you guys? And our supervisor guy was like, uh, sure. And so I don't know why he wanted to help us. He just wanted to. And he, with uh, my friend Spencer, my friend Chad, the one who joined us, um, 
took their latex gloves, of course, we were wearing so we'd stay clean, and they dipped them in the mud, which uh, if any of you all know Ichthus, Ichthus always had mud for some reason. Well, actually, for good reason is this because uh, they did it in mid-April. I guess they never heard April showers bring May flowers because it rained all the time. We had tornadoes. We had snow one year. It was crazy, but it was part of it. I'd come home with mud up to my knees uh, splashed up from people walking around because you put 15,000 people over wet soil and it just becomes a, a muddy mess. Regardless, they get this nasty stuff on their hands and they're riding on the back of this golf cart. And when people are passing by, they go, high five for the guys to clean your porter potties. And people are like, oh yeah. And like, <laughs> so all they know now is we just claim that we clean porter potties and they have brown stuff on their hand. Now, people, understand your dear, sweet, innocent youth minister was not part of this. I was in the middle of my two friends doing this. Was I laughing? Yes, but I wasn't participating. So don't worry, I'm not evil. But what would happen is people sometimes would get mad and chuck things at us. One guy threw a football, one person picked up a handful of gravel and threw it. Did it hit my friends? No. Did it hit me every time? Absolutely. Um, and so just pelting us with stuff. And But it was still really funny with these just... And they did it like <clears throat> good 10, 20 times. They probably got people that way. It was really cool. Um, <clears throat> fun stuff you do when you're a teenager. But then the end of the night, um, we are... Uh, my friend Spencer decides that he's going to start seeing if he can get people to pay him money to lick his fingers that have mud on them, which is icky. I'll give you that. Um, and he goes up to this woman um, who actually uh, turns out happened in a weird circumstance with 15,000 people happened to be the woman that I opened the door on earlier in the story um, in the porter potty. Um, she didn't recognize me, luckily, but, uh, so he walks up to this girl and is like, hey, how much will you pay me? I just cleaned your porta pies. How much will you pay me to lick my finger? And this woman goes off and it's just like, how dare you talk to my daughter like that? And he's like, it was just a joke. I'm so sorry. And kind of like backed away. And she's like, what's your name? What's your name? And like yelling at him. She's like, I'm old enough to be your grandmother or your mother. Uh, we later said it would be funny to say, lady, you're old enough to be our grandmother. Um, just to kind of insult to injury. I can't see this. I'm actually somewhere, I'm uh, away from him. So in the darkness, all I hear is a female voice go, what's his name? I thought my friend was just flirting with these girls. And I was like, that guy? That's Spencer. That's Spencer Stovall. And then the light hit them, and I was like, oh, that is an angry woman. That's not some cute girl he happens to be flirting with. But then she can't get his name right. She's like, okay, Spencer Strovanoff. Strengths for Stabaya. And like she says his last name like a good six times and can never get it right. She's like, I'm going to tell security on you. And so then she left. We never heard anything from her. We never saw her again. Um, but it was a really enjoyable uh, work experience, to say the least. Um, the best one, though, um, was the year that I worked the. Uh, uh, I can't remember what it was called. It's the tent in the back of the stage where commissary tent, maybe it's the tent in the back of the stage where the bands actually eat. And so uh, I was, my job was really hard. Um, I had to hand soda pops to people. That was it. And I got free tickets. And I, during that eight hours, we had backstage packs because we rhymed the stage is where this tent was. Um, so one time I heard, oh, I'll take Pepsi, man. and I looked up and I was handing a drink to the lead singer, uh, Hawk Nelson, and I was, which sings, uh, I think they sing Drops in the Ocean, um, but they sang a lot more poppy or punk rock kind of stuff. And I was like, Hawk Nelson. Um, if it could have been Family Force 5, which is my favorite Christian band, I think I would have passed out or something like that. Or Ryan K. Ryan K would have been probably more around that time. Um, I, I love them as well. But that was the best year. Um, but that's my, my story. So let's see what kind of comments we've got going here. The Hokey Pokey stick from Kinsey. Um, uh, 
I'm guessing Jamie Baker Moore is Steven again. Annie's here on her, her parents' account. Uh, let's see. Kenzie says she's had that happen to her once. Um, I'm wondering if you mean someone opened a porter potty while you were in the bathroom, which if so, I'm sorry about that. That stinks. Um, okay, so uh, it's been 15 minutes. So now for Clay snack of the night. Um, tonight's snack uh, that I'm gonna try is roasted seaweed snack, lightly sea salted which makes it sound like they let the water just like brush up on top of it and lightly salt it. Presley, you're here, yay. I need to figure out why the comments don't scroll for me unless I scroll them. Well, first I have to open them. I've been told that these are okay. I've never had them, so it kind of counts as a midnight snack. It's not as much as the umabushi, but it's something. Um, let's see. They do not look very good, though. They feel like plastic. They smell like cardboard. I don't know. What is this? There it is. Ooh. It's see-through. I don't know if you can... Uh, I don't have my... Do I have my phone? Let's see if I can make this happen. Uh, not, 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 not necessarily. Ooh, green. There, that shows you. Um, they're a color green that I don't necessarily like. Um, I'll eat that in a second. We also have Mountain Dew Voltage. I hope that Facebook doesn't punish me for showing things. This is my favorite drink of all time. Uh, l is probably my favorite, but Mountain Dew Voltage, which is raspberry flavored. It's blue, for those of you all don't know. Um, it's probably my favorite drink. We're going to preemptively open this in hopes that uh, I can, I don't get grossed out by these seaweed snaps. I was thinking they'd be more like a cracker, not like thin seaweed. Mm, voltage. Okay, let's see. Clay eats seaweed. Take one. Mmm. It's like eating plastic. Yeah, super chewy. That's disturbing. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It's like bouncy plastic. I really think I could have eaten this stuff and had the same feeling, except it eventually broke down. It wasn't very good. I just heard my wife laugh from the bedroom where she's watching this, which means she just watched me eat it. And uh, thanks, sweetie. That's very sweet of you. I'm disturbed by that. I can't tell you why. I feel like I'm. that's not going to process in my body. I mean, it's seaweed, so supposedly it should be really good. But, like, just no. Um, hey, kids, don't eat seaweed. It's uh, not worth it. But I think we paid 89 cents, so it's a much cheaper nasty treat than my $20 umabushi that I had last week. I kind of feel like I need to go like throw up to like cleanse my system of that. That's that's quite nasty. I'm gonna make Amber eat one later. <laughs> that was to her. Well, now I've had sushi when I ate. I'm just not even mess with that because it won't go back in the package now. It doesn't work when one or return to its home. I've had sushi, which has seaweed in it. I actually like sushi pretty well. Um, actually, one of my favorite foods that I wish I could get um, was smoked 
mullet fish, I think is what it's called. Um, Amber just yelled no, that she won't be eating it. The answer is yes, she will. Um, she loves me. I can convince her to do anything. Um, uh, uh, Steven, you said week two of asking Clay to eat flavored tarantulas. Week two of Clay saying, send me flavored tarantulas and I'll eat it. Um, I don't know where I would get that. Um, but if you find it and you buy it for me, I will eat it. So ask your parents before making purchases, kids. Um, uh, so Lucas says 100-year-old duck eggs. That would be weird. I had like three-day-old uh, juice today that was just left in a cup. It began to ferment. It was not very good. Um, I forget what, even what story I was telling now. Oh, sushi, I think was it. And mullet, smoke, that was it, smoked mullet. Um, I used to get it in Florida um, with my parents. My my grandparents lived in Sarasota. And um, so we would go to Siesta Key is the beach that's close to there. And on the way back, there was this place we could stop. It was this little shop and they had small, smoked mullet fish that was wrapped in newspaper. And it was like fall off the bone, smoky flavor. It was so good. It's like, I've, I've looked around. I think I can buy a mullet. Like in Lexington, they have like a unique seafood shop. But uh, the only other place I had it was in Washington State on my Yakama Indian Reservation trip. Um, they, uh, uh, I, I had one there and because he like, uh, it was one of those times where he's like, hi, you all aren't crazy enough to eat it. And I ate it. I was like, oh, I've had this before. And he's like, what? That was what, really? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I told you all that one time I ate bear. That was actually pretty good. Um, yeah. So uh, I was Clay's new snack of the week. New snack of the week. Uh, Lay's has a some chips i ate the other day and they are crispy taco chips um like they're supposed to taste like a taco and they taste odd but good but odd but good but i don't think i want to eat them again but they actually taste like tacos somehow they really captured it um i highly recommend you trying it uh i th i thought they were good um, ah, Erica, my sister is in this chat. Yay. Uh, I, I don't, do you remember those, uh, smoke mullet or are you too young to remember that? Erica, sister of mine. Um, Kenzie, I would try something spicy, but my stomach uh, with my IBS would make me probably have to go to the bathroom and then midnight snacks with clay would have to end very quickly. Um, and also I just don't do heat very well. Um, or I would, I would try Takis. I'm willing to try Takis. I might need to do that just for you. Um, as long as I don't eat a ton of it, I should be fine. Um, every time I get my drink, I can see my, uh, algae, that's not algae, seaweed. And I'm just like, why did I eat that? Um, a, um, a few weeks ago, I was talking about these snacks. I had a, I got a Kroger. It's these, someone rang my doorbell at 1130 at night. Everybody's skipping. I think this is a plan thing. Please hold. Ah, it is the illustrious Miss Rhonda, I believe. We may have a guest speaker tonight. I'm going to move my snacks. Anyway, I'll go back to this. These are harvest snaps. These are made of green peas. This is Parmesan roasted garlic. So. This is more important. Okay. Um, okay, that was Miss Rhonda. I'm, I'm receiving a... Uh, advanced thing it comes with this is a surprise to me guys 
here we are. I got a scroll of some sort. Da, da, da. It came from the couriers. I'm hopeful that this is going to be yummy. You can hear the illustrious Miss Rhonda. I don't know why I'm trying to unwrap it. Here we go. It says Cheesecake O' Graham. In the year of the coronavirus, April 2nd, 2020. A dear diary entry for sure, for your dream has finally come true. While your friend doth lie snoozing, for all he knows, he slumbers by ten. He sent his cheesecakeogram to convey a love to the death, a love to the death for you. Well, maybe not to the death, but it sounds impressive when you read it out loud. So all across the internet land, beyond the states and through the stars, he declares a friendship loyal even though he feels pressure from many a choir member and students and teens to say that he loves you because you can't love God and not your brother. Enjoy the oatmeal cookie cheesecake, Chef Wayne O. I'm excited. It's the cheesecake, guys. It's all happening here, live. Amber is standing in the corner laughing at me. Amber knew this was coming. Let's see this cheesecake, guys. Oh. Cheesecakey dish. I'm so excited. Oatmeal raisin cheesecake, guys. Wayne did say he loved me, just so y'all know. Ooh. I'm going to show you this, and then my illustrious assistant, Amber, will go and cut me a piece. Ooh. Oatmeal raisin. Oh, I just almost dumped that on the, <laughs> the computer, guys. Um, last week, Peyton said something mean to him, and I said, Wayne, I've never said anything mean to you. And he goes, you're right, Clay. I love you. In front of Wayne, uh, in front of Peyton and Rhonda. So, it's all happening, guys. I'm so excited to have my cheesecake. It only took two and a half years for Wayne to finally love me enough. And I even got an official uh, letter. I don't know if he wrote it. I'm going to pretend like he did. It's probably Rhonda, but I'm pretty sure he wrote it. Um, I'm going to read through the comments as we wait. Colton said one of his teachers had ketchup lays, and they were weirdly addictive to eat. That's kind of what these taco chips are like. Uh, Erica doesn't remember the mullet, but my mother does. Uh... Nick says the Ruffles all dressed potato chips are the best chips ever. Um, I think I've had those, but they sound good if I don't. Um, I should get a bag of, Annie says I should get a bag of mixed bugs off of Amazon. That's possible. I like the idea of that. Oh, Erica volunteers to guest star and eat spicy. That might be it. Y'all could actually see my sister that way. Miss Rhonda is not your bestie, Annie. Uh, you say everyone's your bestie. Miss Rhonda is clearly my bestie. She came to my house to deliver food at 11 o'clock at night. That makes, I mean, she loves me more than she loves you. Um, <laughs> Erica asks if the, you all are about to watch me be murdered. Uh, that would have been really like, hey, guys, hang on. <laughs> Just a little bit of choking. Don't worry. Um, I, I don't know if Nick knew about this happening. Um, pea snaps are good. These are like hard pea snaps, Kenzie. Like they're more chip-like. Um, yes, Colton, I got my rite of pack passage. Um, <laughs> I love how Craig's like, it's happening. Or Ellie, I can't remember. Someone of the Hastings knows. Erica wants me to save you half. Uh, if you're lucky, maybe. Um, <laughs> Lucas, no need to cut it, just bury your face in it. Just so you know, I say bury, and my wife says bury, and I think it's the cutest thing in the world. Um, oh, there's dad, my father, Daryl Allman Parker. Yes, his middle name is Allman, so is mine, and my grandfather's first name is Allman. I'm the third Allman, just a nut. Um, and one time I was sending a prayer request to Miss Rhonda, and I said my grandfather was sick. Well, and then I, I 
and his name's Almond. And I said, well, in a nutshell, and she had to try not to laugh because she found that hilarious, but she knew it was a serious time. Um, I think I got to eat cheesecake and then we'll continue. Miss Rhonda makes the best oatmeal raisin uh, cookies ever. And Mr. Wayne makes very good cheesecakes combined. This should be really good. Look at that. It's going to be great. I love oatmeal raisin. If I start to cry, guys, stay with me. Mm, smack your grandma. That's good. Mm. That guard. Wayne, you, Wayne, you, you muskrat, you did it again. You really did. This is, this is amazing. I'm uh, very pleased. Let's go in for another cut, shall we? This is the best midnight snacks for with clay, poor clay, eating clay. I mean, I mean it. Fantastic. I'm not going to lie to you. I was worried that all the hype wasn't going to live up to it. But uh, that's some fine cheesecake. It's good. It's real good. Sorry, I'm losing my mind. This should tell you how good this cheesecake is. I already lost my mind, but who knows? Um, let's see. <sighs> That's amazing. My father says, told Rhonda. Oh, yeah, this was Wayne's birthday. Uh, Tuesday was Wayne's birthday. Um, I think. Yes. Uh, so... Uh, I was sad. I was supposed to go eat at Malone's with Wayne. He doesn't believe me, but I was, I thought that would be my final thing. But he's got me cheesecake now, so he doesn't get it. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll still do it, Wayne. I love you. I've always loved you. Um, to those of you that don't know my relationship with Wayne, Wayne is our worship minister. And I've vied for his love ever since I started working there. Um, and his wife, Miss Rhonda, is my church mom. And... She's super sweet and goofy and inspires me that even when <coughs> I grow up, I can be a kid like Rhonda. So that makes me happy. Um, oh, so Peyton knew about it too. Sweet. I'm glad everyone knew and didn't tell me. Um, let's see. Ah, my father has. Yeah, Amber hosts, uh, like, does the watch party. And for some reason, it makes you, like, do a watch party with Amber and not on here with the comments and stuff. It's weird. Um, and I'm not even for sure it shows me who's watching. So right now it says 14, but there could be more of that. Um, I love, Michelle, I, I love, oh my hell, uh, I love oatmeal raisin cookies. I was in, where was I? St. Louis. And a uh, there was this place called Insomnia Cookies. Um, they stay open and make fresh cookies till like three or four o'clock morning. It's stupid, ridiculous, and awesome. And one night I was uh, how it was situated. Like you went to like you were going to go into this apartment building, and they had like the double doors, and you could go into this first section, but then you had to have a pass to get into the apartment building section and actually do stuff. Um, but in that double de door section, there was a little, it went off to where this insomnia cookies were. And so we went in there and we, this was the third night we'd walked down. It was several blocks over, but we, it was worth it. And I was like, do you want oatmeal raisin cookie or chocolate chip? And I was like, you know what? I want oatmeal raisin. That's really what I want. And uh, so this lady walks through when I'm doing that and she's walking her dog. And she goes out, and then, like, five seconds later, she comes in, opens the door. She worked, She lived in the apartment. She's like, I'm sorry. This is probably not my business. Oatmeal raisin? Seriously? Over chocolate chip? I'm sorry. I just, I shouldn't say anything. I'm going to leave. And, like, she went to leave, and I was like, well, apparently I need chocolate chip. And she's like, no, don't let me change your mind. I was like, 
you felt like you should tell a stranger he was making the wrong choice about his cookie choice. I think of anything, this is a sign from God that I should eat chocolate chip. And so then I got both. <laughs> both of both worlds. Um, man, that's a good cheesecake. Back to the cheesecake. One second, guys. I love cheesecake. It's so good. Mm. Yes, very good. Um, let's see. I'm making Kenzie jealous with cheesecake. Good. My dad's back to smoke mullet. Took my sister Anna and my uncle Sean, and we bought some smoke mullet from the man in the tractor supply parking lot. The cheap one. Tracks it too. That's awesome. I'm glad I like it. Um, I really forget where. Dad, you got out of the car and you went into a magical building and came out with smoked fish. I don't remember anything, but the building looked like how big it was. Nothing. I just have that's a very vivid memory I have. Um, going around are the best. Kenzie says I agree. Obviously. Um. Oh yes. Uh, I. Dad, uh, Erica says that my dad says bury the same way. I don't find it cute like I do when I have it. Erica, uh, I'm going to get in trouble now. Guys, I have Anna, Erica, Angie, Amber, and I'm pretty sure I'm missing another A in my life. So when Amber, my wife, who I love very dearly, says it, I think it's cute. When my father says it, it's just my dad talking. My dad's cute, too. But... um. Lucas, are you saying that you have a, there's a smoke mullet place off of limestone? If that's the case, I need to track that down. Oh, you're saying there's a, uh, the insomnia cookies. Yeah. Um, that's not as exciting, but <laughs> still. Um, so, uh, once again, Stephen makes it look like his grandmother's having a stroke by saying mom's having another stroke on his mother's account. Um, I really wish Rhonda had come in. Rhonda, next time you bring me stuff, come and guest star. I was clearing off a place for you and everything. Um, oh, <laughs> Annie says Annie is another A. Um, yes, Annie, but... When I talk about people that are cute and that I love in my family, your name doesn't pop into my head. I do love you. That's one of my dear, sweet children that I have to yell at because that's the way you understand love for some reason. Um, for those of you playing at home, uh, for some reason, Annie just, she'll come in, she'll be, <clears throat> and I'll be like, Annie, talk to me, and like playfully yell at her, and then she yells back at me. Annie causes problems, guys. Um, she's always having a problem with the Adams kids. I tell her that she's not allowed to tell me anything Presley or Preston or Paige has done to her that day because she always has a complaint. Yet again, I'm calling her out over the internet over this. Um, oh, I start singing. That's what got your mom, Stephen. That's awesome. Ah, Glitter Girl delivered the, well, Glitter Girl sounds like someone that we should interview as well. We could sit six feet apart. I can put my computer far enough away. We could just shout at it. Um, so if y'all haven't caught it, Rhonda on Fridays releases her little kids video. And uh, me and Peyton star in most of them. And we have a really good time making it. We're a bunch of goofballs. Um, tomorrow's is going to be hilarious. I do two weird voices. One of them was supposed to be the pigs from Shrek. Yeah, play the movie. Yeah. It did not come out that way. So please excuse it. But more cheesecake time. Okay. So. Last week we had a lull, so I brought home my crazy would you rather question books. 
So I'm going to ask, would you rather? And then in the comments, I'd like you all to tell me what you would rather do and maybe a brief reason why. Um, so would you rather drink a glass of really spicy mustard or eat a bag of French fries found in a sidewalk garbage can? I'll repeat it. Would you rather drink a glass of really spicy mustard or eat a bag of fr French fries found in a sidewalk garbage can? Um, while you all get your answers put in, uh, I actually would go for the mustard. Um, I'm a, I like mustard. Now, I don't really like spicy mustard that much, um, but especially in this day, I, I could not eat uh, french fries. But I guess it's a bag, so technically the french fries would be protected. But at the same time, like, that just sounds icky. Um, so, would you rather drink a glass of really spicy mustard or eat a bag of fries found in a sidewalk garbage can? Let's see what you all are saying. Um, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. The first, Stephen says he'd rather eat the, or drink the spicy mustard. Lucas says the mustard. Nick, Nick mustard. Everyone's saying. Um, let's see. Oh, Ellie says she, and Ellie, thanks for putting Ellie at the end. That way I know who it is. She would eat the french fries because she hates mustard. Um, I get that. <laughs> Colton says he'd pass out from the mustard, but at least he wouldn't get a disease. So that's what he would go for. I don't know if fries can go bad, Rhonda. Um, just being in the trash can is what gets me. Um, so spicy mustard. Okay. Uh, we all continue to answer that one. I'm going to read another one. Um, I guess I should start from the beginning. That way I can work my way here. Um, this one's kind of gross. Eat a hair sandwich or an earwax omelet. That's a hair sandwich or an earwax omelet go to the polls um i think i would go for the the hair sandwich um because earwax just sounds nasty um i guess i i might as well have eaten one of those stupid seaweed things um let's see presley would still Spicy mustard. Uh, <laughs> Ellie says, nope, nope, nope. I'm thinking that she must be answering my question that I just asked. Nope, 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 nope. Not even wanting to think about it. Um, ah, my sister says fries can go bad. My sister Erica found um, a... Uh, she couldn't figure out the smell she was telling me about tonight and she couldn't figure out where it was coming from and she had a sack of potatoes in the back of one of her cabinets that she has no idea how long it had been there but like she had to like open the windows and air out the place and like get gloves and take out the potatoes and scrub it with foaming bath cleanser and like all kinds of craziness i'm getting a raisin with my my raisin cookie cheesecake Mm, that stuff's good. I take this cheesecake as a ultimate act of love from the couriers because it's like Rhonda's good oatmeal cookies, but with Brett Wayne's good cheesecake combined to love me. Okay. Um, let's go to the comments. Uh, Steven says hair sandwich. Um, <laughs> Lucas just says I'm out. Um, I don't know if that means he's leaving or he doesn't want to talk about it. Um, both are bath. I agree. Um, <laughs> Colton says, who knows, earwax may taste good. Um, there's a chance that, uh, uh, well, that's good that Colton doesn't know what earwax tastes like. I guess we can all sleep easy tonight. Um, 
Kenzie wants to know if the fries from last one's still an option. No. Um, <laughs> Ellie would just rather die. Um, Annie says hair. <laughs> Nick says he'd fast. Apparently, the, the Skinners don't know how to play this game. They're just opting out. Um, I, at least Col Annie says Colton's nasty. At least he's open to opportunities. You know, you never know. I think he makes a strong point. Uh, I think we know what hair tastes like, but we might not know what, you know, your wax might be okay. Um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Lucas really just wants me to eat all the cake. I gotta savor it. I only have so much. It took two and a half years to get the first one. Who knows when my last one's coming? Okay, um, so, so would you rather have a fly frozen in every ice cream cube you put in your cold drinks or drink all your beverages from an unwashed tuna fish can? I thought it was just gonna be a tuna fish. So, would you rather? have a fly frozen in every ice cream cube you put in your cold drink or drink all your beverages from your unwashed tuna fish can um let me know girl i have this fake uh, ice cube it was plastic but it had a fly or an ant it was ants that looked like it was frozen in the middle and drop it in a person's drink and be like what happened it was a a silly prank um, I think I would, uh, have a fly frozen in every ice cube you put in cold drinks. Um, one, you could just not drink cold drinks. Uh, but also, like, I don't know, maybe the fly's clean. Um, I just wouldn't want to always, you know, when I drink tuna fish stuff. Um, the little helpful fact at the bottom of the book says, uh, most bugs are actually pretty nutrient and uh, nutri- why cannot nutritious that's the word because like most meat they are full of protein but remember flies eat all kinds of nasty things so the little guy that's in your ice cube could have been eating dog poop on an hour ago which doesn't sound so good but if he ate it he's not gonna already be frozen by that point and in my drink so that wouldn't be the case so um Scanners say they write their own rules. Um, and he says she's still sticking with the hair sandwich. Um, yeah, Lucas says he'd take the tuna. That wouldn't be too bad because he likes tuna. I like tuna pretty well, too. I'm doing tuna. It does not sound very good. Steven's all with the first option. Presley's with the f uh, frozen fly. Um, Colton yet again points out an interesting thing that uh, the first drink would wash out the tuna. I don't know. I think the tuna would stick around. It wouldn't be as strong as the first drink, obviously, but I think it would stick around. Um, Nick chooses the fly. Steven the fly. Um, Lucas has one of those fly cubes. That's awesome. Um, Colton replied to Colton, the second one. Uh, yeah, my dad point. This is kind of what I was thinking. My dad says, "Easy, the ice cubes will be melted before my drink is done. I would just drink faster." My Mountain Dew that I opened. This will probably last me a good three or four hours. I drink so slow. But if I if I knew that I needed to have the drink drink, so I didn't have to have flies my drink, then yeah, I think I would. I would do that. Um, Annie has the same idea. Um, Ellie says that she had the fly. She never puts ice in uh, her drinks anyway. I think how it's written is you would have to put ice in them is how that would work. Um, so, uh, yeah, because he likes tuna. It's the unwashed part that gets him. I think it just means like you didn't wash the tuna fish out. I don't think it like it's dirty. I just think it still has like you know if you dump tuna fish out and then just pour a drink and drink out of it. I think it's what they're going for. Um, 
This one's an interesting one. Would you rather not be able to eat again until you see a bald eagle in the wild? I've actually done that. Uh, or until you can find a four leaf clover. So would you rather not be able to eat again until you see a bald eagle in the wild or until you find a four leaf clover? Um, I think I would go with four leaf clover. My my mother has a, because my mom does random things, that's where I get a lot of my randomness from. Uh, she has a strategy to find four leaf clovers. It's like looking for like shapes that don't match. Like instead of individually looking, it's like train your eyes to see four leaf clovers when you like look over them really quickly, something. I just get her to teach me. Um, but I did see a bald eagle in the wild um, at uh, <clears throat> Norris Lake, um, where I go vacationing in the summers. Um, we were out on a boat, and there was a bald eagle just hanging out in the tree. It was crazy. crazy. Um, so, continuing on with our last one, um, Jamie said that she would pick uh just pick the ice cubes out it doesn't work that way it has to be stuck in there um steven would do the four leaf clover option any four leaf clover uh steven says he's found a four leaf clover before but um never seen a wild bald eagle yeah i could see i think that would be a lot easier to do um Lucas says that I'm guessing JJ James is good at finding those. Yeah, just use them kind of like a pigs can find truffles. Just I'll tie a rope around his waist and be like, go find them, boy. That's the image I get. I think it'd just be funny. Um, I think James would be down to help you because he's uh oh, he's a real sweet kid. Seems to always want to help people. A lot of people are saying four-leaf clover. Uh, I think a four-leaf clover is a lot more accessible than a bald eagle. Um, oh, Ellie says a bald eagle in town. Um, that's really cool. Um, I love birds. Um, I think they're cool. Um, <laughs> you easily find four-leaf clover in his yard. Um, yeah, I think the uh, four-leaf clover seems to be the winner in most. Um, Rhonda found the clover and Girl Scouts won a candy bar. Of course you did, Rhonda. Okay, moving on to our next Would You Rather. Um, would you rather always have to write with your quote-unquote wrong hand or always have to write with your eyes closed? So that's always have to write with your wrong hand or always have to write with your eyes closed. Um, I think I would go with my eyes closed because one, my handwriting is horrible as it already. So like, you're probably not gonna read it anyway. And I, as long as I can read it, we'd be good. And there were several times that I actually did write with my eyes closed in college. Um, because I'd be sleepy, and I'd just be typing, and then I'd just be like. And wake up, and like on my board it was like, and this is how ministry works. You see, first you do the, 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 and it was just random keys that like, I was just like, this is how you type. Um, so easy, I could do it. Um. I feel like you could use your hand as a guide to like know where you were writing and stuff like that. That would be my thing. I almost just skipped your all's answers. That would have been bad. Um, let's see. Presley says write with her wrong hand. Um, Steven says your wrong hand. Colton says wrong hand. Uh, he says just learn how to be ambidextrous. Um, is there anyone in here that's ambidextrous? Um, you crazy mutant. 
Um, oh no, something fell. Um, Annie says that she could write with her left hand because she does pretty good anyway. Well, okay, Miss Thang. Um, ha, yeah, Lucas gets it. If his handwriting's bad enough, it wouldn't matter. That's what I'm saying. And Presley's just like, oh, I'm just perfect. My handwriting would be good with my eyes closed. Um, I'm just kidding, Presley. It probably would be. Um, ah, Ellie points out, uh, eyes closed, she would never have to see how bad it was. <laughs> That's a, a valid point. I mean, how do you thought about um, Rhonda. Rhonda says eyes closed, hoping muscle memory kick in. Guys, if you've never seen Miss Rhonda's writing, it is stupid good. Like, it looks like some, it's been, it's like calligraphy or like printed out. I don't understand her writing. It is too perfect. Speaking of writing, both my sister and my father might remember this. One time in fifth grade, I took my time to actually like take my time to write it out and stuff like that. My mother was so pleased that she kept it and for years would just bring it out and be like, Clay, remember? Remember when you wrote it really well? You could do it again if you just put your mind to it. Look how good. Um, however, my dad did actually one time, um, my mom wrote down the quote. I don't even remember it. Uh, I think he said that I had a spastic hand because I didn't know how to hold my fork correctly. Because I held it like this. It was like, I eat, I eat food. Um, instead of like a gentleman, like a, a pencil. I didn't hold my pencil the right way either. But he just had enough of teaching me to write one night. And said that I had a spastic hand. And made my la my mom laugh so hard she wrote it down so we'd remember forever. That time my dad was mean to me. So, yeah, that's how, that's what writing's done for me, guys. Um... Uh, I don't think typing is the same thing as writing. I'm just saying I'm used to writing. Colton. Um, oh yeah, Nick's asking if anyone takes dictation. I feel like that's a um, selfish desire um, that he wants someone to dictate to. Um, why did how did you say pigments can't fly? Um, I don't understand that. Um, Nick says he's like James T. Kirk. I don't believe in a no-win situation. Good. Uh, Nick is a huge dorky, trekky person. That's funny. Um, Erica remembers my mom being like that. Uh, so, yeah. Um, one last one before we close out, I think. Um, would you rather be a boy and have a girl's name? We're talking boy named Sue. Um, hello, my name is Sue. I'm going to kill you. That's a good song. Anyway, um, or be a girl and have 10 brothers. So be a boy and have a girl's name or be a girl and have 10 brothers. Um, just so you know, my girl name is Clarice. Um, my friends and I made it up after my like birthday party in fourth grade. We all decided we'd have girl like what our girl names would be because we're normal kids, and that's what normal kids do, right? Normal stuff like come up with girl names. My friend Jonathan was like like Joni Jonine or something like that. We made one more complicated than it needed to be. Um, Chris was easy because Chris can go Christine and stuff like that. Um, let's see. Uh, Steven's telling on her, his dad. Uh, your fifth grade teacher told me that you are the reason she had to get glasses. Wow. That is tiny writing. Um, Uh, Annie says, be a girl, one of ten brothers. Um, Annie, I feel like you're tough to make that happen. Like, you would just, like, you'd have ten brothers, but still be the dominant child. Um, 
Golden says, uh, <clears throat> be a boy and have a girl's name. Um, one of my best friends, Spencer, his middle name is Leslie. Um, it's his middle name, but anyway. Uh, and Annie's boy named Andy. Okay, that's fair. Uh, <clears throat> Brynn has two brothers, so that counts. Uh, yeah. Um, Colton points out there's a ton of cool girl names. I, I agree. Um, I I think it might be a boy named Sue kind of situation. Just make it better. Ten brothers hoping they would spoil me. Yes, Rhonda. Your ten brothers would spoil you because... Um, I don't know if you all know this story, but the best story I've ever heard from Rhonda's mother is one time she would just sit the dog in a chair across from her and talk to it until it got so annoyed it would leave. Um, I think that's a hilarious story um, that Miss Rhonda could ever talk that much to make a dog leave. Um, Erica wants all the brothers. I think that's because she had such a good brother. <clears throat> um... Ellie says, be a boy and have a girl's name. And she could barely <laughs> handle one brother much less him. Um, who knows what Emmy's going to turn into, Ellie? She might be even more problem than Evan. Um, Colton says, <laughs> two brothers is enough. Um, James counts as nine brothers, but Stephen says that's funny. Uh, Annie points out that Presley's boy name is Preston, and Preston's girl name is Preston. That makes sense. Um, huh. Presley says she has one brother and can't handle it. Um, ten, and Kenzie says, 10 brothers because I could have an annoying older sibling. I don't know why you'd want an annoying older sibling, but okay. Um, well, guys, that was fun. You all got to see the momentous occasion that I received cheesecake, so life is good. Um, I'll pray for you guys, and then... I hope you all have a good uh, what is now Friday. So let's pray. God, we thank you for this time of uh, goofing off. Uh, thank you for giving us the capacity to laugh and to tell stories and to talk about our writing and just all the random stuff and memories we have. Um, thank you for making your image and giving us those gifts. Um, <clears throat> be with everyone here. Keep their them, their family, and friends safe. Um, help keep their spirits up, help us to all remember that uh, you are God and you've got this. Um, and we love you so much. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And I love you guys so much, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it, so deal with it. Good night, guys.